All right, now here we have a K24. We will be disassembling and showing you guys all the things that we can check and we would find and discuss things that are oftentimes not talked about. And I'm sure you guys have seen videos of unbolting the pulley. We were not exempted. We used this power handle and my traction bar as extension so that we can nudge it loose. And boy, was it that hard. And also where this K24 will be going. And I know you guys are going to love where this engine is going to end up on what chassis a rear wheel drive. So you know this is just for you. <laughs> Okay, we actually got the pulley out and unfortunately I was not able to prepare the camera or my phone to get the footage. We were too worried or too busy wondering if the power handle or the bar is going to break because the power handle was actually bending. We actually used my unused traction bar as an extension to the handle so that we have more leverage and I haven't used it as a traction bar but now I've used it as a power handle. Great, right? Actually, I cut off the diagonal arms for the traction bar so that I could retrofit the EG traction bar to my EF but then I sold the EF so now I have to remod it back to the EG. Moral of the story, do not mod a chassis part that's not for the chassis because there's always the right one for the correct chassis. This way, no extra work, right? All right, now here. Now we're gonna start disassembling the rocker arms and removing the cams, and we're gonna go with the time lapse. All right, um, here we have my colleague, Not Not, removing the rocker arms. Well, the cam cap is first. She's got a lot stronger hands than I do, as you can see. All right, we go with the time lapse now. We take this one by one and make sure you know they're all together so you don't mismatch the whole thing all right there now we actually did untorque the head and so we're just gonna pull it off now there there this takes time but hey you know you cannot rush these things the only thing that we could rush is the time lapse so you know hey lucky you guys right okay now we're off to pull the head okay careful wait there oh the gasket okay there it stayed oh it's actually quite fresh you know okay now let's look closer let's come close a little bit yep the bore finish looks pretty decent now let's go with unbolting the oil pan in time lapse of course and then removing all the pistons but of course the bottom end first like the oil pump the strainer and even the main girdle all right we won't be using this because we'll be switching to a better oil pump so we'll let you know on that when you start building it okay now we unbolt the rods we go with number one we we'll label it and then we go with the number four because it's already there you know of course don't always don't forget to label the pistons he's actually handing it to me so i could label it off screen of course and if you're gonna clean it make sure you label it properly because we don't want it mixed up you know all right there you go one good thing with oem bearings is that they're soft enough that when you got dirt or grime on the oil it'll just embed into the bearing surface this way it just keeps polishing the journals and look this does not need micro polishing it's already too slick or too nice too smooth so let's go to the desk and here we go all four rods laid out on the workbench it's actually important to know that you gotta lay it down like this being organized actually leads to a more consistent 
work result. And here it's 1, 2, 3, and 4. And because the K24 has 99 millimeter stroke, that's 10 millimeters more than a B20, the rod bearings have more wear than usual compared to a B20. Let's look. One of the reasons why it's worth showing you guys this is because I see a lot of owners or future owners get a surplus K24 and they always just say, oh, it's just stock, I'll just use it every day. Sure, that's fine, but it does not hurt to actually refresh the engine before using it locally because you're talking about prolonging your investment. If it breaks, then you're back to zero. Here, look at the rod cap, the side of the rod cap, I mean. You can see there's wear uh, some of them are like from oil debris or from dirt, but nothing too bad, you know. It's just pretty pretty normal mileage wear. I hope you can see it. See it closer. There. See? And now, if you look at the rod cap, I mean, this, the side of the rod, there's generally more wear. That's because the pistons push the rod down during operation, you know. Because, uh, of course... We create power through compression, not through vacuum. If it was through vacuum, then the rod cap would have more wear. All right, now let's get it back together. And the reason why I mentioned this is because when you think about it, if you open up enough engines, like let's say a B16, no matter how high the mileage is, the rod bearings are going to be significant, significantly fresher than a B20. That's simply because of the stroke. And of course, the same goes with the K24. It's 99. Now, let me talk about the effects of stroke aside from, of course, increasing displacement because this may, may, may help you or might help you decide on your future setup or at least the approach would be with a slightly clearer understanding of the ov overall perspective of the engine. As you increase the stroke, of course, you increase the piston speed, the, you know, the vertical up and down motion, but the rod ratio and of course the stroke affects the maximum piston speed acceleration and it's measured in feet per second squared all right and at, look at these numbers the k24 with the 99 millimeter stroke in its rod length at 9000 rpm the piston speed is 246 five feet per second and the maximum piston acceleration is 191051 feet per second squared now let's look at a b20 with a 137 millimeter rod length and an 89 millimeter stroke let's see at what rpm can it match the k24 so at 9500 rpm that's when the piston speed is actually close but the k24 is still higher because of the stroke but look the maximum piston acceleration is almost close to it 191085 and the reason why i check on this is because this is the start or it jump starts the vacuum signal or the suction or how the engine sucks air the strength and let me do you one better while we're here we might as well check on the b16 and it's also quite interesting look so it takes 10,300 rpm to match or actually still slower piston speed because of the stroke but it matches almost on the maximum piston acceleration that's crazy right and you know when you think about it when you ask people or someone on what you should do or approach on your engine unless they actually understand engines and build to be honest you're as good as just researching on facebook because that's probably where their answers got you know or where they got their answers and even with tuners i mean okay no hate on tuners but because i know locally there's like at least three or four or even five really really good tuners that knows engines well but for the three to five tuners here locally there's at least 100 tuners that have no idea on building an engine so how can they suggest pretty much from facebook right 
which means you could actually pre pretty much research better than them because it's because it's your engine and actually you know locally i've seen a k24 built engine on a four door run 13.8 crazy right i mean we built a b18c on a four door that runs 13.4 so come on right and of course, I know the shop responsible for that would probably say that is what the owner wants and all that. Sure, I get that. But as humans, it's our nature to compare. I don't think that owner is going to be too happy lined up at the racetrack knowing a B18 runs almost half a second faster than them. That spent probably just one fourth of what they spent, right? That's crazy. Okay, now going back to the stroke discussion. So for me, with a K24, I don't think, well, for, this is a personal choice. I find the drop-in cams a little too small for the K24 because if you're worried about the idle, the tuner can take care of that. And if you're worried about low-end or torque, it's a K24. The displacement is strong enough and a little more than what a Civic could handle. So that's more than enough. This is like building a B series with a stroker crank, either 95 stroke or 90, 97 stroke, and then putting in Pro Pro 1 cams because you want low end. The displacement already, already will give you that. Wait, let's go back to the piston and rod set on the workbench because we realized Look at the number one bearing. We had to show you this because number four had the least wear. But of course, it's still not bad or it's not broken or, you know, terminally, terminally worn out. It's just that it received more wear and tear. That's number one. And then look at number two. Same thing, right? And look at under it, on the cap. Wait, let me, let me wipe the oil. There you can see. So it's it's not really like worn terminally worn out. It's just that to understand the engine better, you gotta study the current or the previous running condition. This way, if there's a certain mishap or solution that you need to fix, you can catch it before it becomes catastrophic. You know, so hey, we just had to show you all four now. And, you know, I must apologize for doing you guys this way. We were simply disassembling the engine. And by the time we got to disassemble the engine, look at this. We've had, now we have like at least three or four engine plans or ideas, right? And that happens to me all the time. I'm disassembling an engine for a specific project. And by the time I'm done disassembling, oh, I got three or, three or four plan, engine plans in my mind already. Crazy, I know. And so to make up for it, let me share you this. This is some work we did for a fellow in Australia in 2015. He tracks his car. It's a K24 RBB head and also we ported, cut open the plenum of the RBC manifold and port matched it well. And here you can see it. We're going to show you here. Look at that. It's port matched really well. And it's ported through and through, right? It's hopefully to gain good volumetric efficiency. And actually, you know, this one actually ran really good. The owner is quite stoked or was quite stoked for it, you know. And so, hey, he paid well, you know. So there's another one that we're going to show you right now. And it's this one. Forgive me for I forget his name. And also I'm not sure if it was from Guam or New Zealand. A fellow sent me two of his RBC manifold for all motor use that we did port. Pay close attention to the port finish. We did this in 2016. It looks really good actually. And this, I know, the owner was stoked also and told me that they actually improved their previous best time with the new manifold. So hey, that's really good and makes me happy, you know? Now, going back to this K24 that we're disassembling, this is actually for a build that we're going to do in the near future or actually really soon. And it's going to, guess what? A Miata. They actually ordered the K-Power Industries conversion kit for the rear-wheel drive Miata. 
oh, you know, this is going to be crazy, crazy fun, right? I mean, I don't promote reckless driving, but this Miata would probably effortlessly do endless donuts. It's going to be so fun. And we'll, we'll get to update you guys with all the progress that they do because they're working on the body themselves. So this is going to be so, so fun. And also, don't forget to hit the like button if you're enjoying this. This helps the video get promoted some more. And I've, I want to mention, a dude or a guy actually sent a super thanks on one of the videos. If he wishes to be anonymous, then I won't mention the name, but I'll just say Metal Gear. Love you, dude. Thanks for that. And it really means a lot because it gives me more energy or drive to share more and share better. And soon... When we're going to be building this K24, we'll be making a video of it, obviously, with all the details that we can share. And also the K28 Type R, we're going to be disassembling before even building it. So, you know, you got to subscribe if you haven't and hit the bell for all the notifications and you won't miss out on anything.